Hello and uh, welcome back to the Ninja G Skyrim stream. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to uh, run around with my high level character while I'm discussing the next game in the series, The Elder Scrolls VI. Now, uh, from what I've seen, it's in development right now and The Elder Scrolls VI is going to have a lot to do with the Argonian race and the, the region called Black Marsh which does seem like an interesting area. They haven't really covered that too much. Um, in the Morrowind game, they did have a lot of Argonian-themed quests and missions, and it was it was somewhat interesting. It'll be different for them to delve into like one of the beast races instead of focusing so much on the Imperials and the Bretons and the, the Red Guards and the Nords. So uh, I was actually hoping they were going to focus on the, the elves, or possibly the Khajiits. The Khajiits realm of elsewhere is like a desert, and I always thought that would be a very interesting area for them to explore. One thing I do hope they do with the, uh, the next Elder Scrolls game is I hope they take a cue from the modding community and add in a lot of the things that the modders have been adding into the game. You have uh, the immersion mods that have been very popular, and uh, if they could add in some things like Frostfall, it would add a lot to the game. And uh, just in general, things that the modding community has done have improved the game dramatically. It might help if they focus the game a little bit, because you can pretty much go anywhere and do anything, and the, the main storyline can get lost in all of that. This Mecha Dragon is a tough bastard. I'm hitting him with Meteor Storm over and over again, and he just doesn't want to die. Yeah, so Frostfall and uh, Realistic Needs and Diseases are both really great. Like, I cannot play the game without them anymore. Because generally in these Bethesda games, you have food and you have drink, and you can use them like healing items almost. And it really doesn't make any sense. You get critically injured, you get broken bones, and you're bleeding out, and you're dying, and suddenly you just open your inventory and the whole world stops. And you sit there and you eat like a dozen carrots and some some treats and, and some charred meat and suddenly your health is higher and you're ready to jump back into combat and then everything resumes. It really sort of like breaks from the, the level of realism that I'm looking for in these games. Now with the uh, realistic needs and diseases, you don't really gain health from eating but if you don't eat occasionally, you start to starve to death, and the, the lack of food diminishes your statistics, your health goes down, your stamina goes down, and if you don't drink, you'll actually die. And then Frostfall added a lot to the game, where you could actually, like, build a campfire while you were out and about. You could craft your own torches. And the whole aspect of freezing to death really works well in the Skyrim kind of setting, where you can go up into the mountains and it's a blizzard where you can barely see anything. The idea that you might actually freeze to death is pretty interesting. Ha, 
Ha. Huh. Finally. Take that, Mecha Dragon. Oh, you brought a friend. Nice. <laughs> and the mecha dragon, he has a skeleton just like any other dragon. That's a little bit odd. Maybe he's a cyborg. That would explain a lot. So, Bethesda could really benefit from focusing their games a little bit. They might have tried to bite off more than they could chew with Skyrim. I mean, they have a whole bunch of holds, and some of them are not fleshed out very well at all. Like, if I bring up the map here... Let's see if I can zoom it out a little bit. Alright. So, you start here in Riverwood, near Helgen, and this area is amazing. This area is really well done. And then you go up into Whiterun, and this area is really well done too. And from here, you go off into the, uh, the whole thing with the Greybeards, you go up the mountain, and this is really well done too. Now, for the Civil War, you have Windhelm, and then you have... Solitude. And both of those cities they put some effort into. And then for the Thieves, they put some effort into Riften. But you also have a few other places spotting the map here, like Falkreath. Falkreath got no love. Morthal? Morthal was garbage. I mean... Dawnstar? Really? These holds didn't even need to exist. They didn't add anything to the game, like this and this and that. At least three of them could have been dropped. They did a pretty good job with Markarth, although it's not my favorite. And Winterhold is where the, uh, the Mage Guild is. And they did a pretty good job of focusing on the Mages' Guild. The town around the Mages' Guild is destroyed. There's almost nothing going on there. That was probably a good idea. That makes that area a little more focused. But if you see what I mean, you could actually get rid of three of these holds and focus more of the story on the more important ones, and that would really allow them to flesh things out a little bit more. I mean, it's really nice to have such a gigantic, expansive area to explore, and uh, they're probably going to try to make the next game just as big, if not bigger. But I can only imagine they need to coordinate the efforts of hundreds of people to make all of this happen. And then you get sort of like a a difference between areas that are really focused on and areas that are just sort of like thrown together. Like the contrast between the Riverwood White Run area and the Falkreath area is pretty amazing. Like you can clearly see that they were running out of time and they had to put the game out and certain areas like this were just not as densely packed with interesting things to do, and a lot of that was left on the cutting room floor. And even major aspects of the game were not quite finished, like the uh, the Civil War aspect, where you have Solitude and Windhelm and the, the whole Civil War that's going on. They had big plans to do a Civil War that was dynamic. It would work almost like... Um, Grand Theft Auto, where you had 
gang territories that you would capture and then the enemy gangs could capture other territories back and you'd have to go and defend them. They were trying to do something like that and they just ended up having to cut that out and leave the entire thing as sort of a, a static quest where you went through nine missions to defeat the opposite army and uh, once it was over, the, the Civil War was done. And it wasn't dynamic, and it wasn't incredibly interesting. Now, one of the modding community actually noticed that they were planning to have a whole lot more in the game, in the Civil War, to make it dynamic and interesting. And so he went ahead and he added all that stuff back in. And it adds a lot to the game. So I'm hoping for the next game they're actually going to try to focus in on a few towns and maybe leave out like the, the towns that they wouldn't have time to get to. They need to be careful not to bite off more than they can chew. <laughs> the Dawn Guard's after me because I'm a vampire. Fools, you can't beat me. My lightning bolts are too powerful! Now another thing about Skyrim is they had to sort of like lower the the resolution to work on the consoles of the day in 2011. And you can do a lot with Skyrim. You can mod it. You can add a lot of graphics to it to make it a better game. Uh, you can make it really look next-gen with the right mods. High-resolution textures and uh, improved static meshes. You can make this game look really beautiful. And I can only assume for the next game they're going to try to make it look next-gen. It's probably going to be a really fantastic looking game because they really do a good job every time they come out with a new game and improving the graphics just like the the level of detail with each new iteration of their games is never disappointing it's always impressive even if you go all the way back to the early games they were doing 3d when nobody was doing 3d But I don't want them to neglect the, uh, the artificial intelligence. It's nice to make a game that looks good, but you want the characters in it to behave intelligently. Skyrim has some unfortunate limitations. If you try to put too many intelligent characters on screen at one time, there's definitely some loss.
All right, what am I doing wrong here? These doors should be opening. Ah, pull chain. There we go. Speaking of AI, look at this right here. This Falmer Night Prowler hangs back and does nothing for a minute, and then decides to attack. I could have destroyed him before he even had a moment to come up with an attack strategy. That's a lot of dead Falmer. Now people have tried to make mods to improve on this. We have uh, dual combat realism, which makes the combat a lot more dynamic. The enemies will stagger you more easily. There's another mod called Locational Damage, where you can actually target specific body parts. That adds a lot to the game. You can actually try to combine mods like the uh, Locational Damage and Dual Combat Realism, and you get something that's not incredibly well balanced, but certainly more interesting. Really in Skyrim, as far as the combat goes, uh, you can equip like a, a weapon and you approach the enemy and the enemy will take a swing at you and you can block it. I can't really do it with a one-handed weapon. Do I have a two-handed weapon? I do. Here we go. So the enemy attacks and you can block it and you can give a little shield bash or hit them with your weapon while you're blocking and that'll stun them and then you can do heavy attacks or light attacks which are faster and that's all good but it doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it and when you add in something like the uh, the dual combat realism the enemies will try to flank you and get in an attack from the side or get behind you. The archers, the, the arrows do considerably more damage, so you have to be much more careful with the archers. Haha, <laughs> you're paralyzed. Can't do nothing now, can you? So again, I hope the modding community gives Bethesda some good ideas to work with. Dual combat realism, locational damage... I mean, these things have to run a lot of scripts to work. Which could be a bad thing. Because understandably, you can only run so many scripts before you know, even the best computers give up.
Hmm, didn't mean to do that. And where's my load screen at? <laughs> Glitch. No match at all. So hopefully for the Elder Scrolls 6 they can come up with a way where they can have more characters on screen behaving intelligently at the same time. I really do hope they focus in on that artificial intelligence. Because in a game this immersive, you don't want obviously unintelligent enemies. It really takes you out of the game if you see enemies that are just standing there and not doing anything. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. Maybe it's a maybe it's a bug, or maybe there's too much going on and the CPU just can't factor in the, the AI for that many active characters at once. going on here. This one's just frozen. He's not doing anything. I don't know if that's because of my mods or if that's a normal bug. Who knows. for me now, buddy. Let's find your friends and shoot them. Another problem that I'd like to see them take care of in the next game is there seems to be like more of a focus on physical combat. And spell casting is definitely underpowered. The modding community goes to great lengths to fix this. You have 
tons of interesting mods that add hundreds of extra spells into the game. Like this one, which I'm using right now, the uh, doppelganger spell creates a, an evil copy for enemies to fight. I see what it was. I petrified the other guy. He was stuck because he was petrified. It just didn't have the texture on it. Generally, when I play these games, I prefer to be a spellcasting class. And they seem to have had a really difficult time balancing it so that you could have, like, a truly focused spellcasting class. Like, you can... you can do spells and melee combat, but it's really hard to be just one thing. I mean, the game seems better suited to sort of a jack-of-all-trades scenario where a little bit combat, a little bit stealth, a little bit magic. I think one of the worst aspects is uh, magic defense. Okay, that's not right. <laughs> Alrighty then. So what I was saying is the uh, the ward spell, which in theory is supposed to be like the, the wizard's version of a, a shield. If you're a wizard and you're under attack, you want to cast your ward and it creates a, a magical shield in front of you. Unfortunately, when you cast it, it constantly drains your magic. So really, unfortunately, offense becomes the best defense because it's a lot more effective to shoot your opponent in the face with a fireball than it is to cast a ward spell. Because the ward spell might protect you for a moment until your magic runs out, but then you still have an angry enemy that's trying to murder you. So there's really not much you can do with a ward spell other than ignore it and cast offensive magic instead. Now, uh, one of the mods I'm using, Percus Maximus, actually does a lot to improve on this formula. Especially for the Restoration class, they've added a lot of sort of disease spells. And if you can disease your enemies, it's sort of like the opposite of Restoration, but it certainly seems connected to Restoration because, you know, a, a healer would have a good understanding of things like diseases. I'm interested to see what they do with the physics engine in the next game. In this one, it's a little bit limited. I've added a mod called uh, HDT, which improves the physics a little bit. Like, you can get hair that actually 
waves around and you can get uh, breast physics on the characters, on the female characters. That makes things a little more interesting. But what I'd really like to see is maybe in the clothing, things like cloaks that actually billow and interact with the body of the character. That would be a nice addition. Definitely the hair. Another thing I'd be very interested in is uh, if you look at the, the Metal Gear Solid game where you can swing your sword and the sword will actually cleave through enemies and cut the model of the enemy apart in dynamic ways, that's a great idea. If you could do that in this game where the finishing blow would actually sever your opponent's torso in half, that would be amazing. If they could combine the uh, the idea of like locational damage with the ability to sever the actual character model. You can get some very interesting effects that way. Come on. Come on. Where is that sweet spot? What is this? <laughs> well, I can only assume this is your dead body here. And I've picked up your journal, so that's probably part of a quest. That's all I have to say on that subject. I think I'll bring this episode to a close. 